Hello everybody, my name is Russ Grover I'm with sbits.biz. I'm a consultant. I'm not a professional reviewer. Um, I received this uh, HP ProLiant microserver and basically just going to go through some of its features and what I think is good and what I think is bad. I'm not a professional reviewer. The HP microserver starts out about $300 and it goes on up. This one actually has two uh, 500 gig hard drives and uh, 4 gig of RAM and Microsoft Essentials on it. Um, it's a really small unit. Um, it basically stands about 12 inches high by 9 inches wide and about 10 inches deep. Um, you can find out the specs on HP.com. It has four uh, USB ports on the front and as you can see it's fairly clean in the front. I will open it up next, show you the hard drives and what's inside it. Okay, next we got basically four uh, drive slots. These are non-hot swap drives. Uh, they are clearly marked on them that say non-hot swap. It's basically a real quick release and it's easy enough to get the drive out and there's one extra one here and these two are empty um, so you don't have to buy extra bays like if you were doing a hot swap the cool thing that I just noticed is they do uh, give you see there's special screws they're not the standard screws here but they give you extra screws down below these are screws this is an Allen wrench and there's some extra screws here. So they're really kind of thinking of the person that that doesn't want to buy extra hardware or is a professional. This is clearly designed for somebody who is, you know, somebody just starting out. And I just went ahead and installed that incorrectly. Okay. What <laughs> sorry about that. Um the uh, motherboard kind of pulls out here what they want you to do is to pull these cables out unscrew this and this thing even though it's designed toolless I had a bear getting this thing out last time and and it looks like I had a bear getting this one out too. So anyway, I'm not going to pull it all apart because I never have got this cable off even though I've tried and I don't feel like breaking it. But it does come off and all these other cables are color coded and they pretty much you can't put them in any other place. If I can figure out how to get this thing off even though I have the little pinch, I'd be fine. It does come with two slots. Uh, actually, I have a rack card there, which I'll show you later. That's an AMD microprocessor. This one has a 4 gig uh, RAM, expandable up to 8 gig. Uh, some of the smaller ones don't have as much memory configuration. Anyway, that's the inside of it. I'll go ahead and pull off the top here in a second. Uh, a lot of people will say, oh, it doesn't have a DVD. Well, you install software now with a USB anyway, so it really cares about that. The thing I kind of didn't like about this slot is, even though it has a power, it assumes you're going to have your own eSATA cable. So they go through the hassle of giving you extra screws, yet unless somebody can find a, you know, a SATA cable here, um, I don't know where to hook up the drive so this is the on off and the little switches here and I'll show you that in a second but it you know it's semi toolless hard drives are I also wish it had the hard drives of the new Dell T310s which are really toolless completely even the hard drives don't require any screws so I gotta put my cable back I apologize for the handheld thing, but that's what you get when you watch YouTube. See, and but the, you're not, I know I'm supposed to go behind that cable tie, but I don't really care right now. The back is fairly simple. 
This is actually my DRAC card here. Uh, it has its own video and network. This is its own video uh, to USB and network and a eSATA cable. Power, little fan for the power supply and fan for the whole unit. It's really actually fairly quiet. I'll go ahead and uh, power it up and let you see some more. Okay, we got it all plugged in, and I'm, I think I said eSATA before, and I just meant SATA. I don't know, I'm just rambling on, so I'm just letting you see the system. As you can see, you know, this is an off position, it has the amber light on, turns it to green, does a little HP logo, flashes, I know, it's cute, it's blue, reminds me of Adele. So, anyway, we'll go back to the screen here. Okay, welcome. Right now I'm showing you the rack card from the HP ProLiant microserver. Basically what it is is an $80 card that allows you to remote into your server and restart the server and the hardware. This is about a $90 card uh, located on HP.com. Typing in the default admin password. You can actually see all the features of your server network, the MAC address, security. These are remote users. I know I'm going through these fast, but basically, just to see kind of the options you have. It's similar to other software, but this is a hardware version. So the so the this is actually a different card that goes in here, and you can go ahead and monitor your system. It looks like I restarted the server a little bit abusively. But you can do all kind of little remote things. Uh, I think it's a little overkill for most small businesses. Uh, for people like me that are nerds or something that are monitoring or and that, uh, people go, you're probably wondering how I found out the IP of this. Uh, there's probably tools to find out your rack card IP, but I just went into uh, my DHCP services and uh, found out which IP that was just recently added as soon as I turned this on and then just typed it in the URL. Pretty simple, pretty easy. I know there's probably a tool or in some way I just figured the easy way out. Anyway, that's a rack card, HP ProLiant microserver. And the HP uh, ProLiant microserver logo comes up, goes through your uh, BIOS tells how much memory of course just like regular looks like I can straighten out my and it starts up as Windows of course it's Windows Essentials it's coming up as Okay, here we are at the choosing your own language. Uh, it has many options here. Uh, English, French, Spanish, and Portugal. That's basically it. But you do have keyboard options just the same. I thought there was actually more. And you get the thank you, thank you, EULA, EULA, of course you have to agree or you won't be able to install it. This is the configuration for uh, Microsoft Server and I'm not going to go through this right now because basically it just goes into the, it, pre, it helps build a file to create your server. Uh, this is a really nice server, uh, it's small. Um, I would say, you know, 10 people, no problem, uh, 
good little workhorse for uh, any small business that wants a really small, quiet, cheap server. That's my review, and thank you for watching.